You are listening to the Maximizing E-Commerce Podcast, helping you build an e-commerce business you can be proud of. And now your host, Kevin Sanderson. Hello and welcome to episode number 100 of the Maximizing E-Commerce Podcast. My name is Kevin, your host, and I am so, 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 so excited that you are here today because, well, this is a milestone. So, I mean, just kind of cool to say episode 100. I remember saying this is episode number one. I remember recording the pre-episode, like it's still out there. It's like, I don't know if it's called a trailer or something like it's not, it's not an actual episode, even though I think it counts in iTunes as an episode, but it's a, so I guess this might be episode 101, but either way, I'm calling this episode 100 because I started with episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 blah. And well, now I'm up to 100. So super excited about this. So now it's like when I talk about maybe going to the show notes, maximizingecommerce.com forward slash, in this case, it'd be 100. It's always going to, well, not always, it's going to be a three digit number moving forward until who knows, maybe one day we'll have a four digit number. And so what's interesting on that is the, with this episode, we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction. So I know sometimes I say I'm going in a different direction. Sometimes it's just because I'm talking to a different type of guest, but the format of this show is going to be going in a different direction. So I've brought on multiple guests and many of them are, we'll say kind of behind the scenes folks. And so one of the folks who's kind of behind the scenes, I'll call my friend and mentor. And so he's, I started listening to his podcast before I ever met him. And this is someone who I would say has had one of the biggest impacts in me getting into podcasting as well as just getting into the whole e-commerce world. Because at the time, that's what he was talking about in his podcast. Now, his podcast has kind of pivoted and changed direction somewhat, but he started out, wasn't sure whether or not to turn the microphone on. And now he's had about 17 million downloads. And as we talk about here in this segment, which we're about to get into, he is up to almost 1,000 episodes. So just as uh, I hit the milestone here now of 100, he's coming up here before we know it on 1,000. So that is a, quite the milestone. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this segment because this will be a multiple segment show where we have uh, various guests. So let's get into my first guest here. All right. Well, I'm excited to have a friend of mine on who is uh, on episodes four and 73 of the Maximizing E-Commerce. He's been a guest on my podcast uh, multiple times now. This will be the third time I've been a podcast guest on his podcast, now the Rock Your Brand podcast, but formerly the Amazing Seller podcast when I was the my very first time as a podcast guest. Super excited to have my friend and mentor, Scott Volker on. So, Scott, thanks for coming on episode 100. Well, this is exciting, huh? 100. I mean, come on. I mean, that's a, a great feat, man. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I have to say your podcast is one of the ones that inspired me to do this. I would say probably you and Pat Flynn, who I listened to even earlier on from uh, your show. But your show is what got me into the world of e-commerce. I just remember one day having kind of a, let's say, a, we'll call it a bad day at work. Uh, it wasn't like a terrible day. It was just like, one of those like just days you go home and you just question things. And I just happened to, this was like 2015 summertime. I just happened to be looking through my podcast app on my phone and I found your podcast and started listening to it. And I was like, huh. And at the time you were talking a lot about selling on Amazon and it just had me thinking like to get into the whole world of e-commerce. And so here I am now with my own e-commerce show. And I would say if I didn't stumble on your podcast, this podcast may not even be in existence. Mm. Well, yeah, it's it's interesting how it, it uh, you know, one little thing, right? That mm -hmm. one little take action moment. Got yes. It, got it, yes. You see that one little take action moment can lead you to something, uh, something different, something uh, that you might not have done before. So yeah, congratulations on taking that first action and uh, hit and record. Usually a lot of times that's the hardest part. Yeah. So, I mean, for you, I know you've talked a few times before about, you know, I, I think in your case, you've gotten over 17 million downloads on your podcast at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. We, we just hit 17 million here uh, recently. And uh, yeah, we're, I mean, all over the world. So it's incredible. It really is incredible. Yeah. And one of the things I would say about having a podcast is it really is one, you get to help benefit your listeners, but then as the host, sure. you know, one of the nice things is it's a great networking tool. The people don't really talk about it from that standpoint. 
but you end up meeting a lot of people, creating a lot of relationships. I think one of the biggest compliments you can give to someone is, hey, would you be a guest on my podcast? And so it's amazing the people that you end up getting on your your podcast. And you've had, I know a hundred is kind of like my uh, milestone, but like what episode are you on right now on yours? Oh, I just recorded 967, I believe. And uh, yeah, so 967, been at this for over five years, three a week, have not skipped a beat. And I started a coffee talk, which was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we're over 200 on that one now, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. Cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you've got your podcast and all that. So you know, one of the things I want to just ask you, because you know, now that you're up to almost episode 1000, which mm-hmm. I think the statistic, and I've said this in other segments of this, is that the average podcast doesn't last seven episodes, something like that. Like a right. new podcast that comes out doesn't go past seven. So what has kept you motivated to stay with it? Because now, now it's helping me achieve, how do I get to episode 200? And then maybe right. one day a thousand, which you're right. coming in on. Yeah, I, it's a great question. I think the very first thing, and this goes with anything in business. I mean, I even mm-hmm. talked to my Brand Creators Academy students and I'm like, listen, start posting content, but don't look at your numbers mm. right? and commit to a certain number, right? So for content for people that are creating like you, I would commit to a year, right? Mm-hmm. One a week, you know, every single week, it's going to go out like clockwork and just commit to that. Don't look at the numbers and just really come at it from a place of I'm delivering value to the marketplace. And even if it's just one person listening, one person reading, it doesn't matter. I'm helping that one person. I'm just recording it and pushing it out to the masses, hopefully. Um, so for me, I committed to 25 episodes. It wasn't even a year. I said, I'm going to post 25 episodes and we'll see what happens. And uh, I don't know why I picked that number, but I did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think after the fifth episode, I knew that it was going to be something I was probably going to do for a while because the numbers kind of right out of the gate started to to tell me that I should keep going. And that was because at the time I was talking a lot about Amazon and it was really a hot trending topic mm-hmm. at that time. Yeah. And you, you were early on in that too. So, you know, now it's yeah. like people go on YouTube and it's probably every other commercial they see is, you yeah. know, yeah. different ways of selling on Amazon, but you know, right. there wasn't all that at the time. So you were kind mm-hmm. of one of the forefront on that. So I want to give you kudos to that because I might still be working for uh, the man, so to speak, and I might not have this podcast if I hadn't stumbled on yours. So I really appreciate that, Scott. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on and uh, chatting. It's always, it's always a pleasure. Yeah. Kevin, before we do go though, let me, uh, okay. let me let me ask you this for your listeners. Okay, okay. What have you learned since doing the podcast? What has it opened your eyes to? I'm going to flip the script a little bit for for the for the episode for 100 because I think I everyone it. would want to know. Yeah, that's great. And you know, that is something I would say for me it's about just the sticking to it. And so mm-hmm. the, it's now just become a habit. Like it's, it's not even a question. If, if the show notes aren't ready to give it to my assistant who posts the episode, if it's, you know, the episodes come out on Thursdays. So if it's Wednesday night and it's midnight, well, it's time to start working on the show notes if they're not done yet, because it just has to get done. You know, yeah. so it's, it becomes one of those things that if we develop the right habits, it just happens like clockwork. And so. Mm-hmm. You know, on the flip side of it is there's that funnel of, you know, bringing on guests and things of that nature. And so you want to bring on high quality people, you know, get emails all the time of like, hey, you know, I want to come on your show. Like, if I don't know you, it's probably not going to happen. But, you know, finding people that I know are good quality people to come on the show and working on kind of that funnel too, so to speak, because, you know, if you need a show out tomorrow, you can't just email a bunch of people and say, hey, you want to come on today so we can record tomorrow. You might get some people, but, you know, it's, it's, it's best to, do it. So it, it's developing a process and sticking to it, I would say, is really the, uh, the answer to that question. Yeah. And I think, you know what, for the listeners, anything that you're doing, you have to commit to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so the, the, the thing that I would end my little segment here with is commitment, right? Commit to doing something consistently with enough time for it to even get a result. Because mm-hmm. like you said, the average podcaster is going for seven episodes and then deciding to hang up the microphone, right? And you have to give it more time. I mean, if you're posting a blog post, you have to give it six to eight months before Google even indexes it or Mm -hmm. gets it indexed to start ranking. So give yourself time, commit to it, understand that nothing happens overnight and uh, keep taking action. 
<laughs> love it. Love it. I love it. I love it. That's, uh, that's your famous catchphrase is to take action. So thank you. And I challenge all our listeners to continue to take action as well. All right. Well, that was fun chatting there with Scott. And so, you know, one of the things is when you, as I'm sure everybody listening to this can relate, you know, when you create something, whether it be a podcast or, you know, an e-commerce store or set up a product on Amazon, you know, there's things involved you have to do to create it. And so it's one of those things you don't know whether or not it's going to work and you'd always, or you don't always know what the, uh, the path is going to look like. And so sometimes it's good to bring people in to help you. And so I actually brought in somebody to help me with the setup of it and help me, you know, with editing and get a process up and running. And then now I run it with myself and my team, but he did a really good job. So what I'm going to do now is kick it into a guest who helped me with the setup of the show. And then we're going to get into another guest right after that, who uh, you might recognize his voice in the show. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. All right. One of the things I've learned along the way is I enjoy figuring things out, but there's also a cost to figuring things out because yeah, some things in the world are free. There's lots of content out there, but as they say in the world, if it was all about just having the right information, everybody would be uh, wealthy and thin. Uh, and so I invested in uh, having somebody help me get this podcast up and running. So I'm super excited to have the man behind it all whose uh, team helped me get up and running, Carrie Green from Podcast Fast Track. So Carrie, thanks for coming on. Yeah, Kevin, so happy to be here. Thanks so much. Yes. So here we are, episode 100, and you and your team helped me uh, get up and running and help with the you know first probably 30 episodes of this podcast. And you know, one of the things you know is that a podcast really is something theoretically anybody with a microphone can do. Um, you know, there's a little bit of you know technical setup, but once you get up and running, it's a great way to network with folks. And I've had the opportunity to meet people I probably wouldn't have gotten the chance to meet otherwise. It helps build a relationship with an audience. So I, I'm sure probably everyone listening to this is probably a, a podcast junkie to some degree, so they understand the value of a podcast. So. If somebody wanted to create a podcast, what is kind of the basic elevator description of what someone would do to create a podcast? Yeah, great question. First of all, let me say congratulations on episode 100. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you've reached a milestone many, 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 many podcasters never reach. So that is worthy of celebration. To answer your question, I think, first of all, and this may not be exactly what you're looking for, but we can go there. Um, Sure. you You need to have an idea or a concept worth sharing. Mm. Um, I'm not one of those guys who says everybody should have a podcast. Okay. There are definitely people who should not have a podcast because <laughs> right. they would just disseminate junk and drivel and mm-hmm. it just would be a waste of everybody's time. So anyway, have something worth sharing. But on the technical side, what you need just on a bare minimum is a decent microphone, an RSS feed, which is really simple syndication. And the easiest way to get that is by getting a media host account of some mm-hmm. sort. There are all kinds of companies out there that provide that. And then uh, having a way to distribute that. So that means you submit to places like Apple and Spotify and, and, and Stitcher and you know, all the different places. And once you have all that rolling, it's just a matter of learning the technical pieces of putting it together audio-wise, putting it on a website if you want to do that, all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, so I mean, really, it's one of those things that you know, you're publishing it somewhere. It's almost kind of like a blog in a sense, but on audio. And then it goes out to all these different places that can pull it is the, Mm -hmm. it's kind of my understanding of the technical part. Yeah. Yeah. The way I think of it is like your media host account is like a library where you put all the episodes, which would be represented by the books. And then you have all these other platforms that subscribe to your library. And every time you put a new book on the Mm. shelf, they pull it in digitally and can offer it to their users. Well, that is, that is a great way to explain it. So if somebody wanted to learn more about podcasting or reach out to you and your team, where would they go? Well, what I would recommend that they do is check out our website. is podcastfasttrack.com. And if you use the contact button and ask for me specifically, I have a how to podcast step-by-step course that I will give you absolutely free if you mention my good friend, Kevin Sanderson. Oh, awesome. Well, that's very kind. And uh, yeah. I would definitely say your team is very professional, knows their stuff. And if someone is looking for someone to help them set up a podcast and they're the right person because they got a good message, yeah. uh, you're definitely, uh, you're, you and your team are definitely folks worth uh, checking out. Well, I sure appreciate that, Kevin. And it was a pleasure working with you. And I'm, I'm so happy for your success. 
Thank you. Okay, so I'm super excited to have someone with me here today. So if you've been listening to the podcast for any episodes beyond this one, or even at the beginning, you heard his voice, um, and you've heard his voice in all the other episodes once, possibly twice, if you listen to him all the way through, uh, you've heard the voice of Dennis Neubacher, who is the voiceover of the intros and outros of the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. So Dennis, thank you for coming on. Kevin, I'm excited. I'm so excited that you would ask me. Thank you so much. I'm honored. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I think it's interesting is just to share that, you know, for some podcasts and, you know, formats like this, people went on, you know, places like Upwork or Fiverr. And I started thinking to myself, well, who is it that I know that has a really good, smooth voice? And, <laughs> and you were the first person that came to mind. Well, that's, that's, that's very nice. Um, and you know, of course we go back a ways and, uh, and, and that's the, the best part about this, but to be part of your business and, and what you're doing, Kevin, it was even a higher honor too. So uh, I've been a- around broadcasting for almost 45 years now and, uh, got my start early on and, and wanted to, wanted to be involved in, in some way, shape or form on television or radio and, uh, and do, and then eventually do voice work because I heard so many great narrations like, the work that Ken Burns did with, for instance, the Civil War in 1990, that, that narration by David McCullough just really knocked my socks off. So, but that's a tough road. I mean, the voiceover business is not an easy business. It's a fun business, but there are so many great voices. And I even contacted Ken Burns and sent him a tape and he wrote back, he sent the tape back. Well, I don't think he even sent the tape back or the <laughs> CD back. He, I, I think he wrote back. He said, thank you so much. It's obvious you have some talent. He said, but you ought to understand that we have so many people that we call upon and rely rely on. But he said, the fact that you wrote me and sent me this is so nice. Uh, I wish you well with, with your future and, and the efforts that you're making to do voiceover work. But it was never really the direction I wanted to go in the beginning. I think I wanted to be more of a, a DJ or an announcer or, or a newscaster. And then eventually I became a newscaster. And that's what I've really fallen in love with. And I've been a reporter now most of that 45 years. And at times flying a helicopter doing that, doing that kind of work. So I flew the helicopter, reported for radio and TV over that time period as well. So it was a real challenge, a lot of fun, and a different way of broadcasting, as, as you well know, Kevin. Yes, yes, definitely. Definitely. There's lots of different things that you've done, which is uh, an incredible career in the broadcasting world. And for those who are in the Detroit area, they might recognize your voice from some of the places you've been. Yeah. Um, now, has your career right. been fully, this is a question I'm not even 100% sure the answer to, but has your career in broadcasting been all in Detroit? I started at Western Michigan University uh, in Kalamazoo. Uh, go Broncos. Uh, I love, <laughs> love that college. And, and I got involved in, in broadcasting there. And I worked for WIDR. The first radio station that I worked for was the student station there. They did broadcast to the community. It was a 10-watt station. It went far enough that you'd hear pretty much in, a, in all of Kalamazoo that that station was a, a, a manned and woman by uh, the folks that go to school there. And the first broadcast I did, as a matter of fact, was a report that Jimmy Carter had beaten Gerald Ford for the presidency of the United States in 1976. Give you an wow. idea how far back I go. <laughs> and I still, have, I still have a recording of that tape of me doing that newscast. But it was really cool that I can remember back that far doing something like that. And that's where my start was. And then I came back to the Detroit area, got involved in broadcasting in Flint for a while, came back to Detroit again, and then went from Detroit to New York and worked for a radio network, United Press International a Radio Network in New York City. Did that for a short period of time in 1982. And then and throughout all of that, I was still a pilot. I started flying when I was in high school and wanted to be an airline pilot. But you needed to get a degree. So that's why I went to school, went to Henry Ford Community College in Dearborn, and then went to, to uh, Western. And the whole idea was so I could fly for the airlines because you wanted to be competitive with the people that were in the military who were required to have a degree to be an officer, to be a pilot for the, the Air Force or the Marines or, or the Navy. And so by doing it, but then I got involved in broadcasting, fell in love with that, fell out of the idea of wanting to be an airline pilot. But I kept up with the flying. And when I got to WJR in 1982, as a reporter, they said, you know, you know how to fly airplanes. Would you learn to fly our helicopter and be our traffic reporter? Well, sure enough, 1982, uh, 1983, I began learning to fly a helicopter. Started out as their uh, one of their traffic reporters. I was the second one to do it for the station. And, and then I, uh, in 1995, lost the job with WJR. They made some changes. And I went to Channel 7 in Detroit. 
And then we had a camera on the helicopter, which everybody now sees, you know, mm-hmm. from from above. This gyro stabilized cameras, this very sophisticated equipment, mm-hmm. flew with a videographer that flew with me in the helicopter every day, Brian Smith. And he and I would go out and cover breaking news, traffic, uh, regular news stories. I would report from the helicopter, just as I did the traffic prior to that. And then that ended, and I became an air ambulance helicopter pilot. And then eventually came back to the Detroit area, and now I'm I'm kind of ending my radio career, which I guess you could say, working for WWJ News Radio 950 in Detroit as the morning traffic anchor from five until ten. So the, what kind of what went around came around, I guess, in this instant, Kevin. You know, it was just been a wonderful uh, career. It's been a wonderful uh, opportunity, and you know, I've seen the world from so many different angles by being a reporter. It's been very interesting. I met so many interesting people seen so many interesting things, some good, some not so good, as we know, right. um, but it's been fascinating. But I have to say this, in all of this, is I've met people like yourself, of course, that didn't just meet you, I've known you for years, but right, right. you, we'll what you're here doing, in a moment while we know each other. Yeah, yeah, but you, I gotta say, what you're doing, the podcast, really now sounds to me like what radio used to be many, many years ago. Very mm. grassroots, very simple, the whole idea is to talk with people about some great topic. And, you know, the old radio stations, man, they would wish people anniversaries. They have death notices. They would, you know, want ads. They, you know, some of those old stations, small stations, the broadcasting business has changed, but it's still grassroots. You still want to affect somebody in your local community. And your podcasting is really a great way, Kevin, of communicating what you're trying to accomplish with the people that you're dealing with, your clients and so on. I think it's a, it's a fabulous way of communicating. And I'm, I'm, I, I congratulate you on what you're trying to do by doing this. Well, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a good medium. And, you know, it's one of those things that podcast has been listened to in all 50 states. I forget the exact number of countries. I'll say it in another segment here in this. But, you know, it's, it's been heard by people all over the world. And that's something that without a medium like this, wouldn't necessarily be possible. So thank you to the internet and the podcasting space for, you know, allowing that. And it opens a lot of doors, doesn't it, Kevin? It opens a lot of doors to possibilities, to meeting people, meeting the different ideas. Um, and, 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 you know, there are a lot of smart people in this world. And, and you're tapping into the, the talents and the smart people in this world who have some ideas from all walks of life, from different countries, different languages. And, um, it makes the world smaller, but there's still the differences. There's still, and that's what the, what you celebrate, the cultural differences, the differences from different parts of the world, but you still have the same idea that you get up, you try to go to work every dry day, you try to pay your bills, try to put food on the table. But mm-hmm. how do you, you know, talking to other people who have to do that same thing in other, other countries and other parts of the world? I think that's pretty cool. I really do. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, just so everybody has a little bit of context too. Uh, it wasn't like uh, I just reached out to you because I heard you and at, while I was visiting the Detroit area. My wife, uh, when she was in high school, there was a little girl who she used yep. to babysit. Is that a correct story? Yep. Am I getting the details right? Yes, absolutely. Did. Well, we were next door neighbors and uh, Michelle was our daughter Tessa's first babysitter. Yes. So we, it's, we go back a long, long way. And that's, gee, that's 19, oh my gosh, that's 1984, 84. Uh, you know, and then she would, well, we moved to that house next to where Michelle lived. And, and then in 1989, Tessa was born. And mm-hmm. so I think probably in 1990, 1989 is when Michelle was her first babysitter for Tessa. You know, we, we promised ourselves we'd go out and we'd find a babysitter. And Michelle said, right, she was happy to do it. And she was fabulous. <laughs> it's the greatest thing in the world. Now, they, now, now look, now my daughter has children. You know, and Michelle's got beautiful children, you know, and it's like, wow, it, it just it is amazing what where you are in your life and what got you to where you are now, Kevin, it, as you know. It really um, is. It really the little, is. Little, 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 little things, the littlest things, you just never know the impact you have on people. Just just a hello, uh, an opportunity to cross paths with somebody. You know, I've, I've done that occasionally and, and years later. Somebody, somebody say, you know, I, I met you, and, and I'll say, I met you. I remember when we met, and and, that, and you and you just you just you know, put a smile on your face, and you think there was an opening there, and that opportunity came, and look what happened. I mean, look what happened with Michelle. I mean, in your family, that's it's beautiful. You're, you have a beautiful family. Yeah, it's <laughs> really special. I, I really appreciate that. So, you know, I think really the moral of this story here is 
you never know who you're going to impact down the road, who is, you know, you know, look into your contacts, who can help you with the projects you're working on. And, you know, that it could be something really cool and that it helps. Uh, I'm glad that in my little way, I've helped to get your voice in the broadcasting world out to the podcast space anyway. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's, it's a great honor and I'm thrilled. It tells me that I've tried to do the best I could and, and, and you recognize that and, and, and ask me and, and I'm thrilled that I was able to, to be a, a part of this and, and, and what you're trying to do, Kevin. I mean, it, like you said, open some doors. You, you, just when you think you're not, you're not going to do that, you probably are. So, um, thank you. Thank you for, you know, honoring me and letting me part, be part of what you're doing, Kevin. And so I'm, I think it's very special. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. Thank you, Kevin. All right. So that was fun chatting with Carrie and Dennis. Carrie, I think is a really good guy. And definitely if you're interested in getting into the podcast world, at least follow him. That was a uh, kind of him to offer. Uh, um, basically, you could check out his, uh, his materials there. And then Dennis, uh, it's a family friend and he's got a very powerful voice. I mean, you know, when you hear him, you could just hear he sounds like a guy who's in broadcasting and he's done very well for himself with that. So, so that was super excited when, uh, he, uh, agreed to do the intro and outro for the show. In fact, afterwards, he ended up recording some intros and outros you might hear, uh, in the future. So you might hear more of his voice saying different things. So if you've been following for a while, you probably hear us cycle through some of the same intros and outros. And so, the thing of it is when you're in the e-commerce world or really in any world, whether it's, you know, broadcasting, podcasting, e-commerce, Amazon, you know, it's always good to connect with people. And so one of the things I've come to learn is if you can find people that are doing what you're doing, whether it's you're looking to start an e-commerce business or you're looking to grow your e-commerce business or just whatever it is, find other people that are about the same level you're at, or maybe a little bit more experienced or they're at a higher level. And also help people that are maybe like a, a notch or two, you know, looking to get where you're at. Cause, you know, it's one of those things that really is a rising tide will lift all ships. I truly believe that. And so one of the things that I've always tried to do is to get out there and connect with other people. And sometimes it's virtual. And so, you know, sometimes it's connecting with people and they don't know you, kind of like Scott Volker there in that first intro. Like, you know, he was a virtual mentor to me before he became an in person person that I can actually like, you know, call him up and chat. But, you know, before I just knew him as a guy who had a podcast and I listened to him. So he was kind of a virtual mentor. So if you've got your virtual mentors, that's great, but try to find ways to connect with other people. And so I actually have met a few folks through various channels. And one of the ways is I think in-person events. Now, right now, as we're recording this, we're still, even though we're a year into it, we're still into the you know COVID pandemic. So that's really kind of hampered the ability to travel and uh, events being hosted. So it doesn't happen quite as readily as what uh, I'd like, you know, to have more in-person events. But one of the last in-person events I went to, I did a mastermind as part of it. And I met my next guest who, oddly enough, was the first person to leave a review. So let's go ahead and kick it into my next guest here. All right. Well, I'm excited to bring back somebody from early on in the vault, episode number nine. We have my man, Gabe Cassio here with us. So Gabe, thank you for uh, rejoining us here on the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. Awesome to be here. Thanks for having me back. Congratulations, episode 100. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. And just to give everyone a little bit of context, you go back to the early days of it. In fact, before there was even an episode one, you and I happened to be in the same mastermind at Seller Summit back in 2019 in uh, your home of Miami, Florida. And uh, we were at a reception and I had just gotten approval from basically the way it works is you have to get an approval to get your uh, RSS feed, basically your podcast to go live on uh, Apple Podcasts. And just Apple had just sent me the uh, email and I shared with you the, uh, the link and you found it on your podcast app. And this is before there was like an actual episode. I think you were the first person to leave a review. So uh, thank you for leaving that review <laughs> as well. I remember. I think I was more excited than you were. I was like, you made it on Apple. That's so awesome. <laughs> you were very excited. And you had a lot of really good words of encouragement for that. And I really appreciate that. And, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, in this entrepreneurial journey, we can sometimes get stuck in our own head of, oh, something's not going to work. And just a little bit of encouragement from someone who's, uh, even if they're not doing the exact same thing, 
It's just someone who understands that kind of Stephen Pressfield war of art type of thing where, you know, we kind of are fighting those demons in our head. So what I wanted to do is just ask you real quick, because I know this is something you don't necessarily like to brag on, but we did talk in the last show about how you were close to 18 years in e-commerce. And now you're, depending on how we calculate the math, more or less than around 20 years in this business, right? Yep. So it just now became 20 years in November. So, yeah. So, you know, forget episode 100. I mean, that's uh, weekly for almost two years, but you're, you're, you're in the thick of things here in this uh, e-commerce space for a long time. So, you know, before this was like the cool thing to do, it wasn't like every other YouTube video had a how to start selling on Amazon course that somebody was trying to sell you. It was, there was nothing. <laughs> there was no videos. There was nothing. <laughs> Kind of uh, just to take it from there, you know, I, I thoroughly remember, I mean, I like unique things and this was a unique thing at the time, you know, people weren't really focusing on it. I cut my teeth on, on eBay and uh, it was kind of like the place to go to sell your junk back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I thoroughly remember just saying to myself, this is going to be the future. This is so much easier. People are lazy and I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity that that's create, that, that is created from that. People want stuff brought to their door. They're going to want that more in the future. Um, and I kind of had a, a crystal ball in that sense that I realized that it would be the future. And over the last 20 years, you know, that, the, the single thing that has kept me down to earth and really allowed me to succeed is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And I know that's what you wanted to talk about today. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get into that because, you know, it's one of those things that um, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do in life, whether it's be in e-commerce for 20 plus years-ish or get up to episode 100, whatever it is, there's some sort of grit involved. So, you know, it's how to stay motivated. So, you know, what recommendations, because I mean, you've been in this entrepreneurial game for a long time and you don't have a boss saying you must do this or you'll be fired, that there can be pros and cons of that, we'll just say. So how do you keep yourself motivated? Well, I mean, the pros are very easy to spot. Those are the ones that come to mind, the ones that people share. The cons are the ones you really need to focus on and kind of figure out for yourself how to minimize those, how to make them smaller or how to completely eradicate them. And so for me, the most important thing that I've noticed over the last 20 years is that there's no structure. There's no system. Mm. Even, even today, people will sell you systems and, and structure flows and all that, but you really got to cater them to your business. And mm -hmm. so anybody starting or anybody that's been in it for five, 10 years already or 20 years, I would tell right. them, Focus on creating systems, processes that cater to what you want to do, where you want to go, and, and create timelines to be able to knock down goals to get you there so that you can urge yourself and, and push yourself and motivate yourself. Because like, like the topic of the conversation, the mindset, everybody's going to push you down and say, no, 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 you can't do that. Uh, and you got to keep yourself going. And um, that's one of my greatest strengths. Yeah, that's awesome. And I totally agree with you that the more we can make things time bound, it's one of the things I learned for myself, you know, when I've done like uh, virtual summits and things like that, if it's X date, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Or, you know, with the podcast, it's been helpful for me because keeping it to a weekly show, it kind of forces me, you know, sometimes like I'm creating show notes Wednesday nights <laughs> at midnight to be done for the next day. But it's just, you know, what we can do is sometimes put a little pressure on ourselves or, you know, in the example of e-commerce world, Q4 comes around once a year. And so if you want to take advantage of the extra sales, if the products you sell lend themselves to it, then you got to jump on board while you can. So I, I love that. Absolutely. And it's okay to miss. It's okay to not, you know, hit those milestones, those days, as long as you keep them on your radar and on your timeline so that you will eventually get it done. A lot of people will put something on a timeline and because they wrote it down, they will stick to it. Other people, whether they write it down or not, they really don't care about, uh, about getting it done that day. But what I would say is the, the reason that you wrote it down is because at some point you wanted to get it done. And that means something. And so focus on your timeline and create processes. Awesome. Love it so much. Thanks so much, Gabe. Take care, everyone. All right. So that was fun chatting with Gabe there. He's someone who's a early on person to leave a review as well as an early on guest of the show. So it was great to have him back. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, in addition to connecting people, I think it's good is you also have to have a pulse, you know, whether you have a podcast or anything else. And so 
since we're going a little bit more behind the scenes, one thing I wanted to share is, you know, the nice thing is about when you have a podcast, there's people listening all over the world. In fact, you might be listening to this podcast from somewhere other than the United States. Uh, I know Florida is actually my most popular state, probably because I've done a lot of, you know, in-person networking and stuff like that with folks in the state of Florida. And so, and Florida is a large state. It's the third largest state population-wise in the U.S., but, you know, in addition to, you know, folks in Florida, people all over the U.S. and people, you know, really all over the world. So you might be listening to this from somewhere else uh, in the world. And what I think is interesting is that I use a tool called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, and that's who hosts the podcast. So just as like if you have a Shopify store, Shopify is hosting your website. If you have somewhere else, someone is hosting it. And so kind of like Carrie had talked about in his segment with a podcast, you have an RSS feed. So that that goes somewhere and that's hosted somewhere. And so my host is Libsyn and Libsyn gives you a lot of analytics. And so you don't get as much analytics as you do on YouTube, but you get some cool stuff. And so one of the things I think is kind of cool is they give you a map. So if, you, if you're looking at the US, you see a map of the US. And so and you can look at you know a short range of time or, you know, a long range of time, like the lifetime of the show. And you can look and see where people are downloading. And it kind of gives you like, you know, a heat map, so to speak, like where it's, you know, darker, you know, in states like Florida, for example, or California or New York, where there's, you know, more listeners than say other states. And then, you know, some states, uh, if you haven't any downloads in there, it's not darkened out. So as the show grew, we filled up the board. Well, I got to a point where I, had, I happened to look and I, basically, you know, look for the lifetime of the show. This is a a while back. And I noticed I had 49 of 50 states that were highlighted, meaning there was, you know, I'd gotten downloads in that state. So I mean, people had listened in that state. And the one state that hadn't been uh, downloaded from yet was North Dakota. And I actually have a couple of clients who um, are in North Dakota. So I reached out to them and asked them if they could help me uh, fill up the map, so to speak. So excited to welcome them on here now. All right. One of the cool things about podcasts is that you get some interesting analytics. And so uh, to talk about what I thought was actually kind of an interesting story here, I have two friends of mine here, Tate Hovland and Ryan from Office Sign Company. And these two gentlemen are not just friends of mine, but I've been helping them grow their Amazon account. And I happened to be looking in my analytics and noticed that I had 49 of 50 states that people had downloaded the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. And unfortunately, I was missing one state. And what state was that, gentlemen? North Dakota. So I was missing North Dakota. And I happened to know two people that live in North Dakota. And so I happened to email those two people who are the two of you. And almost instantaneously, I got to fill up uh, the 50 states of the US that had been listened to by the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. This was a few months back. So who was the person that completed the puzzle? I think it was me, Ryan, Ryan Fritz. I I think we could go back and forth about it all day long. But I think the funny part about it was, it was what, 6 p.m. on a Friday night. And I think within seconds, we both had responded. So I think we have a photo finish on that, but yeah, I'd like to see that. Maybe do you have the analytics for that, Kevin. Can you? I do, it? I do, but unfortunately, it doesn't give me like IP address, so I can't oh, say like, okay, here's the IP yeah. address of who, uh, who was blip. the the final download. But it was uh, it was really cool, and so maybe in a separate conversation, Ryan Fritz, uh, we can have a, another conversation, maybe in a separate episode, talking about how you built Office Sign Company. I think a lot of people find it interesting. You've built a multiple seven figure business, if you don't mind me saying that's almost exclusively off Amazon. Absolutely. Yeah. We can talk about that and I'll probably go off on a tangent with that anyway, you know, so you let me know when we can discuss that. And because I know that our work together, it's, it's, it's kind of been in reverse. Usually you help people that are selling on Amazon, help them well, sell a new e-commerce site. Right. And so we're, we're doing it backwards or reverse. Yeah. And just out of curiosity, when did you get started in the e-commerce world? Uh, it was about 2008 when we started Office Sign Company, but I had some experience building some e-commerce sites for previous bosses, things like that. And, you know, just having a, a really bad boss sometimes can motivate you to start your own business. And so, <laughs> which is yeah. my motivation mainly. 
Well, that that's fine. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this can uh, can relate to that idea of wanting to fire the man, so to speak. And here you did, and you've been doing it almost entirely off Amazon. So that's uh, incredible. So I know that'll make for an interesting story here down the road. So first off, thank you both gentlemen for coming on and appreciate that you both or one of the two of you completed the puzzle. But we'll, I'll go and give you guys credit that it was simultaneous downloads to make the puzzle of all 50 states for the Maximizing E-Commerce podcast. Fantastic. I was, we're still going to find out the results yeah. somehow, yeah. some way, with like IT or IP testing. And, because I know Tate was busy. He was doing something, and I just went on there, clicked it, and you guys, I think he was, you guys were on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> something like that, something like that. But, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to hop on here with you, quick, Kevin, so that was great. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, that was fun chatting with Tate and Ryan. Ryan is an interesting guy. Um, in fact, uh, if you listen ahead to episode 101, so if you are listening in the future, uh, episode 101 might already be available for you. And if you're listening to this prior to episode 101 coming out, you'll hear Ryan talk a little bit more about his story and his entrepreneurial journey. He's built a multiple seven-figure business that uh, is mostly off Amazon. And you know, there's a uh, uh, definitely some uh, learnings for someone who's going from the off Amazon world to the on Amazon world. Uh, he manufactures his own products. I mean, pretty incredible what he's built. And it's pretty much on e-commerce, like off Amazon. So we talk about that. So you'll hear more of his story. Uh, and it's the cool thing is, you know, I've gotten to work with him and uh, Tate and their team over there, just helping them figure out the Amazon side of things. So a lot of times folks know me as the guy who helps with, you know, selling internationally. And I, I love helping people with that. And, you know, sometimes I just get requests from folks that just want to do some consulting, you know, because they want somebody that has, you know, either experience, you know, in the and on Amazon world, like, you know, I've got other clients, oddly enough, that are kind of like Tate and Ryan. They just kind of found me because I don't really advertise, you know, anything really other than the you know, as far as consulting goes, I don't really advertise doing consulting for businesses that are in that uh, trying to figure out Amazon. I don't usually deal with a lot of new folks unless I know that they're really uh, motivated or they're kind of already existing business owners. But you know, every now and then I'll also just get people that just you know maybe they're just gotten started or they're kind of like you know working their way up and they just want to chat through a few things with someone who's experienced. And that's something I actually do offer, and I've done a not very good job as a, I guess you could say as a podcaster, you're kind of a marketer and I haven't really done a great job communicating that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. So if you would like my help on something and you'd like to book a call with me, you can book a call. So I do have a landing page where you can book a call for consulting with me. And if you head over to maximizingecommerce.com forward slash help, H-E-L-P, and you can, you can get a time to work with me if that sounds like something you're interested in. And I would tell you it'd be one of the best investments that you make. In fact, if you listen to episode 99, somebody who worked with me on a project basis said it was one of the best episodes he had uh, made. In fact, he said the best for 2020. So not here to toot my own horn, but I do like helping people. And so if I can help you in any way, maximizing ecommerce.com forward slash help. So that concludes, we are coming now to the end of episode 100. So First of all, thank you for making through this. I'd love to hear your feedback on how you liked this, this type of episode. You can always email me, Kevin at MaximizingEcommerce.com and let me know what your thoughts are on this type of episode. So this is really cool for me. Here we are, episode 100, and here you are uh, with me as we celebrate this together. So, And the fact that you're still here listening says you must be uh, engaged to the show, and I'm so excited for that. So I'm so excited that you are here, and I'm so excited for the next 100 episodes. So lots of cool stuff coming up ahead. And I'm so excited that you've been around, whether this is your first time or you've listened to all 100 episodes. So either way, I thank you. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening um, on your favorite podcast player. And please consider leaving an honest rating and review because here we are, episode 100. I am so excited, so excited that you're here and I wish you the best in your e-commerce journey. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Maximizing E-Commerce Podcast. Are you enjoying this podcast? Please consider leaving an honest rating and review on iTunes or wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts.